Hello and welcome to the video. This is the first look at something new that I've got in that I'm going to be playing with over the coming weeks. Uh, this, as you're probably spotting, is a VTOL aircraft. Now back in December 2023, those of you that have been watching me for a long time will remember that that was about the point where I lost my faith in hobby grade VTOL aircraft. Now I've done another series since with Ben up at 3DXR. Uh, the challenge has been in my experience, the fact that we in the hobby really want tilt rotor aircraft. Uh, this is the Rockwing from Argus FPV. I'll put a link down below. I'll explain why I've got this in. Because at the end of 2023, after spending nine or 10 months with an RD pilot developer, a lovely guy called Andy up in Scotland, uh, we tried and tried and tried to get a great tune back on the He Wing T1. Do you remember that? And probably smashed up about 12 airframes and just had a really torrid time with it, including finding there were some fundamental problems in the code in ArduPilot around how to operate tilt motor VTOL craft like this. And that took a long time to fix. It's been enough time that I feel I can kind of come back to this without losing my will to live. And quite a few vendors have been in touch saying, oh, we've made a VTOL, would you like to try one out? And it's just made my blood run cold. Until this one. The reason that I've got this in, and I want to give it a try, is because when Argos contacted me about this, probably back in July, uh, they sent me an email saying, do you want to try one out? I gave them my usual set of questions about how well are they tested, how are they set up, you know, how well are you embedded with the Ardu pilot developers and those kind of things. And these were the first manufacturer that actually gave me decent answers. This, they tell me, is tested before it leaves the factory. So rather than it being something that's going to be destroyed within the first 40 seconds of flying, uh, this actually should work fine. We will find that out because I will be putting Express LRS on this uh, and take it for a fly. I won't put walk snail in the nose initially because one of the early, well, the OMP Hobby SMO Pro VTOLs, if you remember that, uh, smashed on its first time out. And that was a thousand pounds worth of VTOL uh, and it smashed and completely destroyed the DJI camera that I had in the front of it. So that was 150 pounds that literally went up in smoke. It just smashed into the ground. So I am continuing to be nervous, but Argus seemed to be doing this in the right way. And then not just slapping something together and sticking it out on the market in the vain hope that they can make a few bucks out of us in the hobby. Couple of specs on this before we get too far. This is the, again, the Argus FPV Rockwing. Length is 917 millimeters. Weight is about just under 1.4 kilograms. Gonna need a 6S battery for this. 6,000 milliamps or similar is recommended. Not lithium ion because we are gonna be running all three motors at once in the hover phase. It's made from EPP. Uh, cruising speed is about 50 kilometers a second. Obviously VTOL. Maximum weight uh, is two and a half kilograms. So that's probably going to be with a battery and the FPV gear right up there. Uh, available in lots of different versions. I've got the really basic one here that doesn't really come with anything. So it hasn't come with a radio. It hasn't come with any FPV equipment. Um, I'm going to add all that myself once uh, I've kind of looked through it. So hopefully that means that if you're interested, let me know. I'll kind of make videos on how you add that stuff. But adding things like Express RS and Walk Snail to RD Pilot flight controllers is things I've already done. I'll probably put a link below to those things. Flight time is going to be around an hour to an hour and 20 minutes. Um, and the range is going to be dependent on the kind of radio system and FPV stuff you put in here. Uh, these kind of things are designed to fly a very long time. V-tail at the back, tilt rotor at the front. Um, and although when I initially saw it, I kind of went back to Argos and said, oh, it looks very OMP hobby-ish. Uh, having got it here in my hands, although it shares a lot of the ideas with that, because actually it's a pretty solid design for a VTOL, tilt rotor VTOL, um, this is definitely not the same model. So here's the box that, uh, that it comes in. Uh, I do like the fact that these things can be kept safe like this because they tend to not be very cheap and cheerful. These are reasonably expensive bits of kit. 
pop the top off and then it's really easy. This is a much nicer way that they put this in the box. We can have um, LED navigation lights on the tips of the wings, quite bright ones too, a whole row of cobs. We have the tilt mechanism here out and the motors are branded as Argus FPV but don't have any specs on them. Nice big chunky connector. We have the toggle lock to lock it into position, two carbon spars, carbon reinforcement in the aileron and the control surfaces are all set up out of the box as well. Obviously we have two of those. They're um, identical apart from their each side. The finish on them is very nice. I am noticing that some of the parts look 3D printed. Some of them look injection molded. There's a combination. Um, let's take that bit out so we can get the main body out. In this bit here, and I'm guessing this is where some of the other pieces would be if it was one of the more expensive SKUs. This is the optional nose. There is one nose in it already for you know, something like a walk snail or DJI system. This is one that's really designed for something like a gimbal. If you wanted to do that, I probably won't use it. We have then a whole load of other bits and pieces, um, parts for things like, it's actually marked as the DJI um, system, but they can be used for anything, including things like walk snail, which is where I'll end up. Uh, this pink thing, I'll show you where that goes in a minute. There's a cable for the Express LRS receiver. So it's nice, they've obviously expecting us to use Express LRS, which is good. Then we have the tail, V-tail configuration. Uh, this is all nicely put together as well. Nice big cob LEDs at the back. Uh, the servos look nice, they look metal geared potentially digital as well. It's a 1.2 meter wingspan. This length is, as I said, 970 millimeters. And the flight controller in here is actually an Argus FPV H7 um, branded flight controller. I'll show you that in a minute. So uh, this thing on the side is actually an airspeed sensor, slightly unusual place for it, but we'll see how well that actually works. Then we have the root of the wing with the toggle lock. Again, that feels 3D printed rather than injection molded, which is not what I expected. Then we have the flight controller under this rear hatch. The front hatch pulls off and that is where the battery is going to go. FPV gear at the front and we have an XT60 to plug the um, bits in. Now this pink piece, there's actually a channel here at the side, nice design feature for you to run your wires forward into the FPV bay and then you can kind of just glue that over the top just to keep them out the way. The wires that are already there on the other side are actually for the digital airspeed sensor. GPS here at the back behind the flight controller. Then we have the rear ESC and motor assembly. Again, not sure what the motors are. It doesn't actually have it written on. And then to put the tail on is really easy and straightforward. Very similar to lots of other ones of these that we've looked at. Just slide it home. It makes all the electrical connectors and then you screw on this collet. Just finger tight is gonna work perfectly. And that is the tail. Then to put the wings on, um, it's really easy too. They've beveled the ends of the carbon fiber tubes, which means locating them is really easy. You'll meet a bit of resistance for the electrical connector. Just push it home and then just pop the toggle lock down and then that will secure the wing for flight. Same on the other side. Push it home. So I hit the camera and then pop the toggle lock and then it's all together. It'll be ready to fly at the field. So in terms of putting it together and building it, once you've got your receiver and your FPV gear in it, it's pretty fast. So this is genuinely the first time I've actually plugged the flight controller into my laptop. So let's have a look at what we can see. So I can see all the LEDs flashing on the flight controller and it's handy. It just has the USB connector at the top. That's fab. So it has appeared. Ooh, okay, cool. We have a Mavlink connection and SL can as well. Let's go for the Mavlink and click on connect. Have a look how everything is configured. So compass is the QNC5. It's the external compass that's part of the GPS. That's probably not terrible. Radio calibration, I'm going to have to do all of this. That isn't set up from the factory on this particular SKU. Obviously, if you get more expensive ones, it will have. Servo outputs, 
look like this. So we have two ailerons, one for each wing, the V-tail, the three motors, and then we have the tilts for the stuff. This looks pretty standard. Um, moving around a little bit at the moment because I expect that it's in stabilized mode, but that looks a pretty reasonable layout to me. Serial ports. So the GPS is on serial port four. Serial port five is set up for display port, which is great. Uh, as I mentioned in the int introduction, once I've got this flying and I'm happy it isn't going to crash, I will actually stick probably something like a Walksdale unit up the nose and we'll be able to play with that. Um, RCN is UART 6 or serial port 7. Uh, that is probably how I'll set it up. I'll probably stick on something like uh, Express RS on this uh, just so that we can get the telemetry back as well. That'd be good. Flight modes. Okay, we have Q loiter and then fly by wire A, cruise and then return to launch. That's like a reasonable set. Um, having things like manual set on models like this, particularly VTOLs, is incredibly dangerous, but that looks okay. Fail safe should be set to return to launch. Yeah. This is actually looking pretty good. Config, OSD is set. Yep, the OSD is going to have to be played with, and that's pretty standard stuff. I, you know, I've covered all this stuff in different videos that I've done. Uh, user params, have we got any? No, okay, no additional controls are doing anything in particular. So this looks pretty basic stuff, to be honest. It's um, kind of as it's supplied from the factory. So I'm reasonably happy with this that this actually looks pretty good. And at the moment, the only two things it's really worried about is waiting for radio control, which it hasn't got plugged in, and the minimum battery um, arming voltage isn't um, there. And that's absolutely fine because again, it doesn't have a battery plugged in, but everything else is happy, including getting a 3D fix. So this looks pretty reasonable to me. I, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to putting this together. So I'm hoping that this is going to go together pretty easily in terms of the Express RS installation, and then we can take it for a fly and see how it hovers, how it transitions, how it flies in forward flight, and then how it transitions back. Argus assure me that they have spent over six months perfecting the tune, the configuration on this, so that it'll do those four things perfectly. And that was all the, the issue that I had with hobby grade VTOL stuff, is that when they were shipped, they never had that stuff set up properly and it was up to us, the community, to try and figure it out. And if you got any one of those four things wrong, it would crash and destroy itself and you'd be coming home from the field with a bag of foam and electronics. So stay with me. Let's see if this is going to work. This might end up being my winter of VTOL because I might circle back and play with the Ranger. Uh, T1 VTOL that I've had in the garage since 2023. I kind of put it away and uh, covered it with a black cloth as I never wanted to set eyes on it again. If this works, maybe it will give me the energy to revisit that as well and we can have another play. But I'll put links down below so if you want to go and have a look at this. But yeah, I'm doing VTOL again. Thank you for watching my video. Check out the playlist and adding Painless 360 to your search terms will help you find my content. If you haven't done so already, please hit the like and subscribe button. It helps a lot. You can support the time I spend here answering questions and helping others by using the links in the video description.